Hi, I'm Margaret, and today I'm making the famous Austrian cake, Sackertot. It's a rich chocolate cake with apricot jelly. I'm using the recipe today from the Hotel Sacker in Vienna, and I'll put a link to this in the description below. I've got to tell you, it's so good. <laughs> First job is to butter and flour the cake tin. This is a recipe that I haven't tried before, so I'm going to be really particular about each stage so it doesn't go too far wrong. Buttering and flouring the cake tin helps to make sure that the cake doesn't get stuck and it just comes out beautifully. You can guarantee when you try something for the first time, at least something's going to go wrong but I'm going to go one stage further and I'm going to add a circle of baking paper into the bottom of the tin just to make absolutely certain. And I think I'll butter and flour that too. OK, that's the preparation out of the way. Now for the cake itself. The butter for this recipe has to be really soft. And I'm going to give it a whisk with the mixer before I put anything else in to make sure it's really light and creamy. I'm sieving the icing sugar to make sure there's no lumps in it and I'm going to do it in a couple of batches too. Let's see if I can mix it this time without getting the icing sugar all over the table. Oops. There we go. One final whisk now, just to make sure it's all properly incorporated. It's good to scrape down the sides every now and again, just to make sure you haven't left any bits behind. There we go, time for the egg yolks. Now normally when I'm making a cake, I just pop the egg yolks in and whisk them up. But I think I'll be a little bit more particular this time as I haven't done it before. So each egg yolk's going to go in one by one and be mixed in really well. I won't put you through watching each one going in. Let's skip through now to the final egg yolk. Now for some flavourings, let's pop in some vanilla extract, just to give it a nice background flavour. Whatever flavour your cake's going to be, it's always nice to put a bit of vanilla extract in there. Next we need to melt the chocolate. Now the chocolate's going to be quite warm of course and we don't want to scramble the eggs just by popping it all in. So I'm going to whisk the mixture while pouring the chocolate little by little into the batter. This makes sure that there aren't any hot spots. I 
I don't want to waste any and lose that lovely chocolate flavour. It becomes a lovely rich dark chocolatey colour. Oh, I could just get a spoon now and dig in. But I better start the meringue instead. I'll pop a little bit of sugar in first just to start it off and then give it a really good whisk, just like we did with the meringues we made a few weeks ago. The egg whites have to be quite stiff. Then I'll add the rest of the sugar in a couple of batches and make sure it's really well mixed in. There we go. Now it's time to add it to that lovely chocolatey mixture. I'm going to add about a third of the meringue first of all. I'll mix this first bit in quite thoroughly just to loosen up the batter. This is how we did it with the apple souffle recipe. Now for the rest of the meringue, I have to be a bit careful. I'll put it all in together, but I don't want to lose too many of the bubbles. So I'm going to fold this into the mixture, round the outside and across the middle. And when it gets to this stage, I can start to sift in the flour bit by bit. Again, folding it in really carefully. And I'll fold the flour in until it's only just mixed into the mixture. I don't want to overwork the flour. Almost there. There we go. That'll do. Just need to pop it into the cake tin now. Again, really carefully. Shan't be too rough with it. And then smooth out the top before I pop it into the oven. Now when it comes out, it'll have a dome on top and we want this cake to be quite flat. So I'm going to pop it straight out of the tin and turn it upside down. And then the weight of the cake should help that to happen. Have to be really careful because it's still quite hot. Oops, didn't do that very well. Let's hope it comes out of the tin now. There we go. I'm going to leave it like that now for about 20 minutes before I turn it back. Then it needs to cool completely before we do anything else. Now the best way to cut a cake is to do a little bit at a time around the edge and turn the cake as we go. Cut it a little bit more each time until we get to the middle of the cake and then the rest should be quite easy. Okay, let's make that apricot glaze. Oh, 
We'll need about half a jar of this and it needs to bubble on the stove. When it starts to melt, I'm going to pop in the rum and give it a bit of a stir, help it's on its way. I need to let it bubble a bit. That way we'll get the consistency of glaze that we need. I found the best way to do this is to pour it on and use a brush to make it nice and even. It's good to put plenty in the middle, then you get a really nice taste. Pop on the lid and then we need to cover the whole of the cake with this glaze. As well as adding a nice flavour, this glaze also acts as a bit of a preserver. I wanted a really nice apricot flavour to this cake, so when it was completely set, I made a second batch and added a second layer. Now let's think about the chocolate coating. It's good to be really organised for this bit and have everything ready because it's quite time critical. It starts with a simple syrup. The temperature needs to get to about 110 degrees centigrade before the chocolate goes in. But don't put the chocolate in straight away because it will be too hot. Let it cool down just a little bit first and then pop your chocolate in and give it a good stir. If it becomes too thick to pour, just pop it back on the stove on a low heat until it becomes the right consistency. Hopefully that plate underneath should catch any drips. Here we go. Oh, that's so satisfying. Watching it go on so smoothly. Bit of white chocolate and a few chocolate decorations then let the chocolate set and we're ready to try a slice unsweetened whipped cream goes perfectly with this cake now you must excuse me there is cake here waiting to be eaten Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you're enjoying watching my channel, do drop me a like and leave a comment. It would be lovely to hear from you. Have a great week and I'll catch you again very soon.